Hi, my name is Randy Fay. I'm the maintainer of DDEV Local, and I'm going to try to show you today how to install DDEV Local and use it from scratch on Mac OS. So I'm starting on a machine that has nothing on it. Hopefully I've got it completely cleaned up so I'm not cheating in any way. But I've got a machine that doesn't have anything, and I'm going to start from the beginning and show you how to install it and how to use it. And it only takes a few minutes, so we'll give it a try. So first of all, what is DDEV Local? It's a Docker-based local development environment aimed at web developers, especially PHP, although you could do JavaScript or HTML or anything else with it. Um, it supports explicitly quite a number of frameworks and CMSs, including Typo3 and uh, Drupal and Laravel and Magento. It's got quite a, quite, a, quite a bit of explicit support, but the, the basics are in there even without that stuff. So developers run a website right on their own computer with almost no configuration of the computer. And they can run multiple websites with completely different com configurations all at the same time. Or you can have them shut down, too. You can, have, you can have 100 websites on your machine, but you just want to run five of them at a time. That's all fine, too. Um, because Docker does all the heavy lifting, you don't even have to install uh, PHP or Composer or anything like that on your host computer. Okay, here's our step-by-step. -step. These are the seven steps that we're going to take. Um, some of these are just showing you commands, showing you how to use DDEV. But we're going to install Homebrew, which is most people's favorite package manager on the Mac. You don't have to have Homebrew to install DDEV. It's just the nicest way and the way that I recommend. Uh, then we're going to install Docker Desktop using Homebrew. Then we're going to install DDEV Local. We're going to enable NFS for, for, for performance. And then we're going to create the simplest project we could. We're going to create a junk project. Then we're going to do a Drupal 9 project. And then I'm just going to show you a few of the commands that will help you get started with DDEV. OK, let's do the first part. Let's, uh, let's install Homebrew. To install Homebrew, we'll go to the website brew.sh. Here I am. And here's the recipe right here. It's just right here. So I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm using iTerm. I guess that's a, a way that I cheated. I sure recommend iTerm to everybody. So I just said go ahead and create these directories. And we are now installing Homebrew. OK, there we got Homebrew installed. So let's take a look at what we have to do after installing Homebrew. We're going to install Docker. So we're going to go Brew. So let's try our Brewcast install Docker again. OK, Docker's installed, but we have to run it. So we're going to run Docker. There we go. And now we have to give it permissions. And now you see the little whale up here breathing, 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 trying to get a breath. Um, when, the, when the whale stops breathing and is fully inhaled, then we're ready to go forward. OK, so the whale is ready. Now here it pops up this fancy dancy get started screen, but we don't need any of this. We don't need to sign in. Nobody needs to sign in. Uh, we'll just close that. We'll do a Docker PS just to see that things are working, and they are working. Um, if we got an error there, we'd know we'd have some a little more work to do with Docker. So we got Docker installed. Now the third step we're going to do is install DDEV, and we're going to piggyback onto that uh, bash completion because I'm pretty much a uh, I'm I'm dependent on bash completion. If you don't know what that is, then you don't have to do it. But I'm dependent on it. And the last time I tried this screencast, I was without it, and it made me nuts. So we're going to do a brew tap drud ddev. That gives us direct access to the to the ddev uh, ddev software, and then we're going to do a brew, brew install ddev bash completion. Uh, if you're running ZSH, I'm running Bash here. If you're running ZSH, you'd also want to install ZSH completion. 
Okay, we finally got it installed. Now you notice it gave us a couple of instructions here. It says to add the following line to your .bash profile. So we are going to copy that and we are going to add that there. And I'm going to source that as well. That just reloads it. Uh, whenever we had started a new window, we would have loaded that anyway. But uh, I want, I need those. I need those bash completions. Can't live without those bash completions. So there we are. We should be ready to go to the next step now. Uh, we we still have to do a make cert dash install. It's a one-time thing that allows our server to be trusted by our own browser. We'll just do a make cert dash install. And apparently I had already done that. It would have asked for my, uh, I think it would have asked for my sudo password if I hadn't done it. So that's something that I didn't uninstall successfully when I was getting this machine cleaned up. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to install and enable NFS. This is optional, but it's very addictive. Uh, the speed of having NFS enabled is really worth something. So we're just going to go ahead and do it. The instructions are here in the performance page. Um, the reason that we have to do this manually instead of DDEV doing it manually is that anything that is system configuration about your host, DDEV tries to leave that alone. Um, that's DDEV, the philosophy in DDEV is that it's, it's your job to configure your computer and DDEV's job to configure the containers. And we don't want to mess up your computer for anything else that you use it for. So I'm just going to search for NFS here in the docs. This is the docs, ddev.readthedocs.io. Um, it says Mac OS NFS setup. That's what I'm going to do. And so here's the Mac OS DDEV NFS setup script. Um, we can take a look at it. I always recommend that you take a look at scripts before you run them. It's a very simple script. Um, it just uh, sets up your Etsy exports. So we're going to use the suggested curl technique here. And we're just going to this this just grabs the grabs the script and then runs it. Now it's asking for our sudo password. And iTerm has to have privileges to administer the computer. We're going to say yes. We're going to let it do that. And now it's restarting NFSD, the daemon that, uh, that runs NFS. Okay, so we have NFS running, and uh, we're just going to test. We're going to test and make sure that it works for us. We're going to actually do a, a dummy project here in just a moment, so we'll do that. Okay, so we have NFS enabled with the script. And now we're going to test that with a, uh, we're just going to use the simplest project that we could ever use. So we're just going to configure and see how we do with it. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make a project named Chunk. And I'm going to ddev config. Actually, first of all, let's do something. Let's turn on NFS globally. We're going to turn it on for all of our projects because it's really nice. Um, now we're going to do a ddev config right in this project. And it picks up the 
project name from the directory. I recommend that you always have the project name be the same as your directory. The doc root is the current directory. And the project type, PHP is the generic project type. So it won't do any settings management for us. You see all the other ones that are available currently here. And let's just make a, an index.php. It'll just run it'll just run PHP info. So that is it. We've, uh, we've made a directory, created an index.php, done the config on it, and uh, let's just do a ddev start and see what happens. Now it's going to have to pull the, this is the first time we've run ddev, and ddev uses a number of Docker images so it's going to pull those images. This is a one-time pull. Um, and so we'll have to wait for this for just a moment. And I'll speed this up in the screencast. But it's, uh, it's a one-time per, per DDEV version. OK, there's my project. It started up. Uh, normally, that process, when you're not pulling images, takes about 20 seconds on most machines. So I can do a DDEV launch here, and it will launch a browser uh, on this page. Otherwise, I could just go to the uh, just go, just go to it. Here it is. It's running. You see, it's a trusted uh, connection because we used Make Cert to make it trusted, and uh, that's our first project, our first trivial project, and we did it. Um, I can use DDEV Describe. I'm going to pipe it to less. I can use DDEV Describe to get the full information about this project, including its PHP version. And you see it's pointing out that NFS is enabled and which MariaDB version and all those kinds of things. Uh, there's more information down below, including how to get to the MailHog and PHP MyAdmin uh, services. OK, so there we did our junk project. That's all it took. Created a directory, created an index.php, used ddev config on it, and did a ddev start. And then we used a ddev launch, which is a quick and easy way to get to the site. OK, let's start the next one then. We'll do a more significant one. We'll do a Drupal 9 project. And in this case, we're going to do a ddev config and tell it what kind of project it is, because it doesn't exist yet. And then we're going to do a ddev composer create to create it. So let's do that. Um, uh, we will just make a d9 directory. Three. And I'm going to do a ddev. Let me just clear this so you can see more clearly. ddev config dash dash project type equals Drupal 9 dash dash doc root equals web. Web is the name of the doc root in most Drupal 9 builds. Dash dash create doc root. Um, and that just does what we did last time manually. It does it all automatically with flags. Now we can do a ddev composer create. This is just a wrapper on the composer create project. Drupal recommended project. And that's it. And it's going to pull one more image because Drupal 9 uses a MariaDB 10.3 image instead of the 10.2 that we just used in our default. So again, this is a one-time one -time pull of your 10.3 for MariaDB. Now, it's going to blow away everything that's in this directory because a Composer insists on an empty directory. So I'm going to say, yes, go ahead and do it because I looked carefully to make sure that that directory was not an important directory. It's an empty directory.
Okay, there it is. It's all created. We can see that there's everything in there. Had we done a uh, composer build earlier, most of those things would have been cached. But since this is a clean machine, uh, DDEV uh, does share the composer cache among all projects. So you tend to get a pretty good cache going there. So we're just going to do a DDEV launch. And we will just install. And I like to install the Umami because it's just a prettier thing to end up with. Okay, here it is installed. You can see all the articles on here. Um, see that the auto sized images are all here. We can look at the configuration, look at the reports. We can do any of the things we want. And it's pretty nice. Okay, let's go to the next step. Um, we will do the just take a look and see if we've done everything. Looks like we did everything. We installed a Drupal 9 project, then we visited it and uh, fiddled with it just a little bit. And now I just want to show you a couple of other uh, tools that you'll need with DDEV to help and list and stop and power off and import DB. So let's just take a look at those. If I just type here, here we go. If I just type DDEV, I get a list of all the commands that are available to me. And let's say that I wanted to import a DB or export a DB. I'm about to export a DB, so I could do a DDEV help export DB. And it would show me examples of all the things that we would do. So let's just do that. I'm going to DDEV export db dash dash file equals slash temp slash db dot sql dot gz it's going to put the it's going to put my file in slash temp in a file name db dot sql dot gz so we can just we just exported what we had and put it in gzip format so that's how i can find out anything i want just ddev or i can say ddev help uh, if I want to know about stop, I can say ddev help stop. And I can, you see, I can stop named projects. So I could list three projects at once. Or I could do a ddev stop dash dash all. I got all kinds of options. So I want to make sure you know about ddev list. ddev list shows you what's running and uh, what, uh, lo what uh, project location it's in. And we started these two projects, so it shows those two. Let's see. Stop. Oh, DDEV Power Off is super, super nice. It just stops everything. It stops every Docker container. It doesn't throw away anything. It just powers everything off. It's very nice. So we got DDEV Import DB uh, that I just showed you. And I could uh, DDEV Import DB dash dash source equals and we put it in slash temp db.sql.gz so I can import that and I'm just basically overwriting everything that I had already done with that install and now it's there and it's everything's the same because it's the same database so that's the whole thing that's how you install and then use ddev I will speed up a couple of parts of that because I know that you don't want to sit and watch a Drupal 9 install um, Here's some resources for you. The docs are at ddev.readthedocs.io. Uh, please remember DDEV local sponsor, ddev.com. DDEV has been sponsoring the development of DDEV local for more than three years. Completely open source project. It's an amazing co uh, contribution 
to all of us. Um, that we have lots of support. You can just search for DDEV support and you'll find it in no time. Uh, but we're on lots of slacks. We're on Gitter, Stack Overflow, and of course the issue queue. Happy to see you there. The project repo is github.com druddev. Um, you can find me as rfay most places, except on Twitter, I'm uh, Randy Fay. Do follow at drud, which is the name of the DDEV company on Twitter. And uh, we'd love to have you try out DDEV Live to host your new project. There's even a 10-day free trial for it. So I've got the URL there for you. Thanks for coming, and I hope this will help you to get your first start with DDEV on macOS.